Hello and welcome back to Disco Elysium. What better place to start the final episode than our Anodic Dance Music Church? And what are we doing this time? Well, we're going to end the game again, but we already know what happens, so we're going to try and do it differently. Our objectives. Oh, first of all, first objective, put on the armor, because the game pretty much gave us hints that we should be wearing armor during the section. Oh, we already have the other armor on. Perfect. So we now have three bits of armor on. Perfect. Anything else that I want to be wearing? Well, I want to be wearing things that help me in this conversation. So, let's see what we got for hat. You know what would be great in here? I just thought of a great way of organizing it that isn't like, you know, just tell me which bonuses are best. Um, If you organize it by section, like you'd be able to maybe right click on the hat and then, oh, if you right click, it takes it away. I just thought I'd try right clicking in case it was a mechanic. But like you right click on the hat and then it shows you all the other hats and you can compare it at a glance, that sort of thing. Like that's the kind of stuff that I'm looking at and thinking, ooh, maybe that would be good. But anyway, um, this reaction speed one seems pretty good, although it lowers our, re our rhetoric, which might be useful. Suggestion also seems useful. The revolutionary hat doesn't know. Yeah, okay, so that seems fine. I think, hmm, maybe no hat? I might go no hat. No, no, percent logic's fine. Okay, so we are using this hat, apparently. This one, logic minus authority, not what I'm after. Encyclopedia minus perception. We could keep lowering our perception, maybe. Visual calculus minus drama. We want drama because we want to be able to know if they're lying to us. Uh, savoir faire, nah, visual calculus is pretty good. Encyclopedia could help, maybe. Oh no, it does lower our perception fairly high. Uh, what's our perception at then? Perception's at 5, it's still fairly okay. Okay. Uh, jacket, I think the Esprit de Corps and the uh, Visual Calculus jacket's still pretty good. What else do we have here? Drama minus Authority or Half-Life. No, the Drama and Electrochemistry, that's also a no. Suggestion, pure... Oh, Empathy and Hand-Eye Coordination, maybe. It is a pretty cool jacket, and it would potentially, you know, it, it would go very well with that hat that we gave away, basically, is what I'm getting at. And instead of these pants, they give us savoir faire and physical instrument. Uh, do we have anything else that might be good in here? Uh, we don't really have a lot of options here. Half-life, or half-light, sorry, that's not really what we're looking for. Um... Maybe I just keep those on. This is fine. Yeah, I mean, those are pretty good. Do I use the ledger of failure and hatred? I don't think so. I think authority is actually worthwhile having. So that means in terms of tools, we can put that away. What else are we going to use if we don't? Well, we could drink the alcohol, which we should do before we go into it, actually. So we'll drink the alcohol and then maybe have... Oh, we should definitely... Oh, I could have used those smokes inside. Ooh. I could use the speed, the alcohol. I could use the speed and the alcohol here. Uh, or just leave it and I just take, like, I don't know. The multi tool or something. The tape player. Perfect. The boombox. So we take that and the sword. You know what? That's a great look for us. Neck, Inland Empire, and Volition. Uh, I'm thinking. Drama's pretty good. Oh, does this play music? While we have it out? That's so good. That's not at all distracting. I mean, it's 100% distracting. I think the neck one's good. Oh, you hear the music? That is so good. Alright, we need to change that before we get into uh, combat, but I'm all in. I'm also going to heal up before we go in. Because I'm a whip. Right. Let's go. So our objective here is to end with less people dead than previously. I know. It's not a really exciting objective, is it? But it's what we're going with. Right. And we have a tiny bit more information than last time. But we don't have a lot. Our choices may already have been decided for us by this point, so... Yeah. Okay. So. Ooh. 
Anything in here? Just thought I'd check it before we, uh... Nah, we already... We got everything in there. Cool. Um... Right. Round about here seems like a good point to save. So let's drop in a proper save. Although I still have the boom box out, which means that every time I open the save, I'm gonna have to change that off. But anyway, uh, let's switch that for. I guess the multi-tool, the ledger's kind of cool, but I think maybe even just the torch. I might just go for the torch. Sure, why not? Maybe it being in the dark will actually have an effect. Who knows? I also just quick saved right after my save, so what do I know? Ooh. Stop. Just up ahead. Danger. What you have isn't enough. You'll need more firepower. A ranged weapon. Statistically speaking, sabers have proven to be rather ineffective against advanced military technology. I'm not sure I feel ready for what lies ahead. Lieutenant frowns. Then you'd better get ready, he says, then quickly adds, whatever happens, I've got your back. Maybe this is a hint. Maybe this is a hint to go to the pawn shop. Right? I mean... It's locked. Oh, alright then. Well, it's not a hint to go to the pawn shop then, is it? Okay. Well, the only other thing we didn't do is uh, work with Everard. But, we, you know, we already made our decision on that one. We made our bed. So, we'll lie in it. Right. Let's go. I'm all out of shit to give, Loincloth. Welcome to the fucking reckoning. Put your goddamn gun down. People are gonna get hurt. We need to talk this through, all right? Shut up! You're not gonna talk yourself out of this, loincloth shit fuck! This is the mercenary at the gates. His chest rises and falls under the ceramic breastplate. His fingers reach for the butt of his sidearm. Kim, what's going on here? The lieutenant raises his left hand. This is a misunderstanding. Nothing irreversible has happened yet. You can just return to your unit and forget all about this. The kept is merciful, willing to spare us if we just forget about our murdered and humiliated commander. I think we should just kill everyone caught here. You all drunk, come to your senses. You won't gun down seven people in the middle of the street. This isn't a frontier town or a jungle outpost. Easy, Lizzie. Let me handle it. I know guys like this. I'm sure we can come to a peaceful agreement. Ain't that right, fella? He is facing overwhelmingly superior firepower, and he knows it. Peaceful! It sounds like the armored figure is weeping. We still don't know who this is. Or who she is, really. Nest in your abdominal cavity, like a little wild mouse! The masked man's words are barely intelligible, but you can hear them. Fuck, there's the third one. How did we miss something like this? The lieutenant points to the helmeted figure. The third one. He is the most dangerous of them all, heavily armed. The lieutenant is genuinely worried for his life. You should consult him before getting in there. Hmm. What do we do? My plan is not to get killed, but we have to intervene. Okay. Big one is the mercenary at the gates. If this turns into a firefight, we should take him out first. Send strategy, he's the leader. Okay. We are going to intervene, but there is the option to walk away, but I think we can do better in intervening than we did last time. Right. Get lost, comedian! You cops had your chance! Now it's fucking time for some justice! I think he calmed down a bit. Okay. Big fuck! Um... Let's say nothing and cross our arms. You! Cortinaire turns his bloodshot eyes to you. You're probably going to get killed too. I think I'm going to kill you. I didn't think I had it in me to kill a cop. To your left, you hear the lieutenant cock his gun. No one is going to kill anyone. Let's just put the guns down and talk like civilized human beings. With a wordless gurgle, the killer loads his long rifle. The leader gives a small nod to the helmeted man. You feel your fists contract as you stand there between these men all carrying real weapons. 
You should really, really have a gun near your hand by now, or something dangerous. This feels scary. No, no, it's okay. Soften him up and tr trust the others to attack if it comes to that. Make him talk, present an argument. Even if it comes to a fight, it's always a good idea to drag it out. Get under his skin. Peace. Always peace. It's worked thus far. First, uh, start with the first idea you have, then move down from that, please. Okay. So we can talk about the hanged man or think of an argument. I'm going to go straight into talking about the hanged man. Suggestion. Well, let's get under his skin. That's not what I want to do. Start with the first idea you have and move down from that. Hmm. I'm just going to go straight for talk about the hanged man. Dangerous. Ask about him first. You don't want personal facts about his dead friend coming out of your mouth. He has to start it. Um. Okay. Who are you? Corti. Sergeant Major Raoul Cortinaire, reporting in to burn this fucking mud hut to the ground, he points at the whirling in rags. As he moves, the interlocking pieces of his armor click softly. Click, click, click. The realization comes to you. Like a picture puzzle coming together. His real name is Raoul Cortinaire. The dead man's name was Ellis Cortinaire. He's brothers with the deceased. Yes, we knew this. Probably foster brothers. Yep. Okay. Then he bellows for killing Meme and humiliating our commanding officer, yours. All sentenced to death by lead. Hmm. Okay. Um. Let's ask. Uh, let's say Cortinaire. I know that name. He sways from left to right, inspecting you. I'll say I'm sorry about your brother. He wasn't my fucking brother. He grew up on the same farm and got beaten to the same place by the same sick fuck. Um, let's just say you were foster brothers, I know that. You don't know shit. Lance, Corporal, why don't you? He turns the, uh, to the radio officer on, on his right. You lost him, quick. Don't let him finish the sentence. Um, okay, so that was the wrong choice, essentially, right? Um... Let's go for this one. Um, Banatal 41. That didn't really happen. That that really happened, didn't it? Our colonel did what he had to do. It's e either one cunt or a hundred of them. Root here. He points to him. In your shit pipes. Right. Indecipherable mumbling. He liked to fire mortars at random coordinates. Wipe out mud huts like that. When he gets bored, Lily knew how to command. He was a good commander. I see you miss him. Oh yeah, he would have commanded the fuck hell. Uh, this fuck hell way better than I did, but that didn't happen because Hayseed Bill and Kipti the Kip here. He points to Titus and Eugene. Fucking murdered him. Had him sink, stink the village up for two weeks after, and you fucks did nothing. He points at you. Listen, man, we told you we... Told us what? He staggers forward. What did you say? Who said that? Tattoo fuck, you'll die first. Okay. This isn't this isn't a good line of questioning. Um, let's say um, let's say his parents left him in a fucking leaf compactor. Let's let's change the subject again. Who, Lely? Yes, when he was small, just an infant. We researched him. We contacted the ICP and looked into his birth records. That was in there and other things. They fucking put Lely in a leaf compact and now these cunts finish the job. He waves at the gang huddled by the doors. There's real anguish in his voice, a drunken sadness only engulfs some memories. It's a mind fucked Corti. He wasn't put in a leaf compact, they're making it up to fuck with us, he lances at him. Major, permission to... Open fire, we can't have that. Interfere now. Uh, I will find his killer. I'm just gonna get out of the su suggestion was a bad idea. Find his killer, cop. His killer stands right there, shitting his pants. You're standing in the way of pr protecting them. I know what this tactic is. Silo Sam. He stares at you, eyes pink from the alcohol. You're gonna die for them right here, today. 
Big talk, but that leaf compactor won't leave his mind anytime soon. It's a small thing, but it got him off center. Think of an argument. All right, here we go. This is an illegal tribunal. Krenel would never sanction this. Who's the commanding officer? Take your pick. Really, none of this looks like it's going to do anything but piss him off. You only have time for one argument. Choose wisely. Hmm. I have time for one argument. Um... The top one? None of this is a suggestion says no. Alright, let's have a look. The rhetoric... Oh, right, so some of these are dice, some of these don't. Oh, okay. So, the ref... Okay, so yes, that was the dice check to pass it. Okay. But suggestion told us to not do any of this, so do I just not do any of this? So you just stand there? This is bad, very bad. Do or say something now. But suggestion told me not to say anything. Um... Listen, they didn't do it. Let's go with that first. Yeah? Then who did then? It was someone else who's not here now. I could blame it on Clagier, but let's say it's someone else who's not here now. How fucking convenient. He gives you a drunken stare, then puts his hand on the gun. His fingers are twitching, that's the draw reflex he's about to draw. Um... Let's say it was a sni He was shot from a great distance. A sniper did it. You think I'm fun, stupid cop? There's a dangerous gleam in his eye. What if I just shot one of your pals here right now, huh? How about the kipped? Tell me it was a f magic fucking sniper one more time. Um, why doesn't he believe me? The Hardy Boys confessed to hanging him all together. Titus said we took him out back and hanged him. He said it loud and in a public place. Uh, okay. Listen, he was shot. He wasn't hanged. Listen to me. You were lying. DePaul heard it. He doesn't move the weapon. A... A Kaijel Model 40 revolver. Eight rounds in the barrel. Gun slowly sways in his hand from the inebriation. You heard it wrong. Lieutenant shouts. She and these men have been helping us find the shooter. Um, the hanging was only a cover-up. Listen. Okay, so he shot up. So he said, fucking liars. He pulled the trigger. A plume of smoke erupts from the muzzle of his gun. The shot rings in your ears. A low tinny ring. Then the hardy boys yell something. Uh, okay. The young woman stands and looks behind her. The shot's flown over her head, crashing a, a small plate, a pane of glass window behind her. The man looks at his revolver and smiles. I missed. I know what I heard, Cordy. They said they killed him. They said it was a good way to end a Sunday night. That doesn't sound good. You need to change this topic now or there will be another shot. What topic? Shots have been fired. Act before it's too late. That was a close call. Okay. Um. You're all drunk. Look at yourselves. Yeah, so what? Uh... Your judgement is impaired? I think I did that last time and it didn't work, but... Let's say you'll regret this? Nah, I'm clear as day. Fucking government ordained super soldier. Enough already, what is this? We didn't come here to fucking chat. Interrupt me again, I'll execute you on the spot, Lance Corporal. The outburst is accompanied by yellowish saliva around his mouth. Okay. So that's okay. Who is that? I didn't know you had a third guy. Rude. Rude is the killer. The killer. Hong Quilen. He doesn't talk much. Uh, all of you fucking cunts inside out. The killer? The gunner. The raddest. The killer. What do you think he does? Um, well, he kills, or, yeah, or I'm a killer too. He kills? 
Smart loincloth, he fucks natives up, soldier of the apocalypse style. The Wild Pines rep does not approve this. You think I care what the company cunt thinks? Okay. Okay. Let's say we're working together, she knew you were out of control, she told me. She's gone, you stupid fuck. Sailed off five minutes ago. She doesn't give a shit about you, Silas. Stay cool, don't do anything stupid. Titus shouts to his men in the background. The company bitch is gone. Lily's gone. Fuck, are we still doing this shithole? He looks around, tired suddenly, sad even. Guys, I, uh... I just get in the way. I don't even have a gun. As he runs to the yard, Titus turns to his men. Well, that's one, who, that's one survival who didn't survive previously. Hold your ground. Any more of you run, I'll shoot you myself. We're doing this together. They're huddled close in formation, steel. The rest will stay, even if it means dying here with him. Why did I not find my last, my lost gun? Standing there. What's that, loincloth? I can't hear you. Sounds like you got your mouth full of dick, Rudd. Shit, this is it. Tell him anything. Tell him you have more information. Um... Mm. So, kill me and you never find out who killed your colonel. I've been withholding information. Rudd, kill him. Okay, and then we fail it. Well, maybe. Let's keep going. So, um... Something is built for taking out armored vehicles. Dodge it. Alright then. So I'm just gonna say... I think they're getting the same react, the same thing here. We feel um, a tapping like rain on your chest plate, heavy drops of rain, then the sound of dice rolling as the cuirass distributes the shot evenly from plate to plate. You got hit, your armor took most of it, but still your rib cage burns, feels like the blood is slowly seeping into your lungs. Lieutenant Ames, face pale without a tremble, he quietly utters, God please. He's aiming for the eye slot on Rudd's helmet, an extremely difficult shot. He has to, the rifleman will fire at you again. Then, two shots ring at once, from Lieutenant Kitsuragi's pistol and the other from the pulse. It's aimed at Kim, but it misses. You hear a scream behind you. Who screamed? Glenn. Okay, so Glenn is dead. Oh god, watch out. You see two cold eyes looking at you through the smoke and the panic, the pistol raised, aiming at your chest point blank, then the man squeezes the trigger. Look him in the eye. A look of happiness, his eyes seem unnaturally bright, shining like stars. Something in the fear must distort him somehow. He is evil and the end. Dodge it. Alright, so we get shot again. And we're out. Well, we had this happen before. Let's be honest, we've had this happen before. Here it comes. Death. Yeah, we failed that. Your entire lower, lower body is on fire, your legs can't support you, pain is too immense. Touch my lower body, slick and warm, what parts of me are missing, most of what's down there. I don't care, fuck me. What do I see? Okay, well, you know what? We've been down this path before. Reload. We've already seen this. We've seen this exact one. We gotta try something different. I obviously did not do the correct move, sir. You know what we could do? Here's my next bold move. You ready? Take off the stuff. Right. We no longer have a weapon. I put your goddamn Shut up! You're not gonna talk yourself out of this, loincloth shit. Say nothing. This. Right? You all easy, Lizzie. Peach for nesting. So we're going to intervene. How did we miss something like this? Stop, this is the police. So we're now in between. Get lost, comedian! Big fuck! Um... Right. Let's say I can see you're drunk. Oh yeah, welcome to the fucking party. You're probably gonna get killed too. I don't give a shit if you're cops. No one is going to kill anyone. Right, okay. Let's just put the guns down and talk like civilized human beings. Soften them up and trust the others to attack if it comes to that. We don't even have a gun. So these two, I think, are wrong. Or maybe these two need to be done right. Let's talk about the hanged man. Let's say I knew you weren't a goddamn scab leader. 
I don't fucking act too well. All right, same, same thing. Right, so he's this. The interlocking things of his armor are moving. Right, Foster Brothers. So, what did he get annoyed about? The, the leaf compactor was good, right? Yeah. That's fine. There's a real anguish in his voice. A drunken sadness suddenly engulfs some memories. Permission to open fire. We can't have that intervene now. Is this just the same stuff? Maybe there is no way out of it. Um, everyone says good things about him. He was a talker. What do you mean a talker? We heard testimony. People said he was charismatic and nice guy to be around. Yeah, he liked to chat up natives. Squeeze a bit of kept ass here and there. Great fucking idea that turned out to be. If Lily were here, he'd spare the lot of you. Maybe shoot one for show, but me, I'm not a big fan of public affairs. Yeah, okay. At your command. He had blue eyes. Baby will let someone fucked up and put baby's eyes on a grown man. It was creepy, but bitches, bitches like that shit, I guess. Or I don't know what bitches like. I just know how to mow down cloths. Okay. Let's just go through all of these. See his brother, and then you went to all the same places. Same fucking mud hut town, too. Okay, good. So that, that says that went well. We'll talk about this one. Yeah, okay. That's fine. We did all of this. Um... Yeah, so that didn't go so well. Okay. I'll find his killer. Uh, big talk, but Leaf Compactor won't leave his mind. Okay. Wild Pines rep. Let's say... Um, can we just... Cut out on this immediately? Oh yeah, Wild Pines is not going to... Well, they don't care. We'll just, just go right away. Okay. You're drunk. Um, it's okay. Doesn't sound like nothing. Sound like you wanted, were about to break into a sermon. What? What? Was that it? Was this? We didn't come here to chat. Interrupt me again. I'll execute you on the spot. We already did this. Listen. Okay. We could pin it on Clagé. Or Clagé. It was Clashé. The bird. You fucking tell me a bird killed our colonel? His fingers are twitching as a draw reflex. Hmm. She was the only person in the room when he died, upstairs? You think I'm fucking stupid? Yeah, okay. Fine. Uh, why doesn't he believe me? They didn't confess. You're lying. Uh, when they were confess, and they confessed, they were lying. Yeah. Okay. So that's did the exact same thing. It doesn't matter which option I choose. These do the same thing. Okay. Hmm. Uh, let's talk about the third guy. The killer. Is this just the same thing? Hmm. I'm a killer too. Uh, oh, okay. What we're we waiting for? Let's blow that pig fucking mouth off his face. Lance Corporal, just fucking shut up and wait for your order. He's not used to commanding or leading. He feels uncomfortable. He'd rather shoot to kill. Think of an argument. Uh, okay. We want to get her riled up. Let's say Krennel does not give you the right to conduct a tribunal. Pops. He says, looking at your saggy sideburns. You seem to calm him down for a second. You have no idea about the rights Krennel extends to us. Okay, what rights are those then? If I fucking kill you, hang you to that street lamp. He points to it. By your shit pipes, then that's called a necessary display of force. No one's gonna give a shit about deadline cloths. He snorts. That's a reality. Okay, not much else, but he's thinking about something else. His hand did move off the gun. This is something. Right. Um, I don't know. Maybe we just tr tell. He says, "Tell him we have more information." I've been withholding information. Ah, well, fine. Restart. But we know we we have we got further. We know that there are two things: the leaf. We know the leaf one gets to him. 
and we know that winding him up or with her works as well. When she gets too angsty, he gets less angsty. He called us pops, right? That's the kind of stuff we're looking for. Although apparently I'm he's all looking out at of a shit sideboard, which, which we don't Shut have. Shut up! You're not going to you know. talk yourself out of this, Moink. This is a right. This is fine. Easy, Liz. So, in here again we go. How so, we miss something like this? Um, we're going to say stop, this is the police. So we run in the middle. Right? Get lost, comedian! Straightforward. Easy now. No one needs to die today. Oh, people are going to die today. We're not leaving it like this. These tribals hung him up for everyone to see. No one is going to kill anyone. Let's just put the guns down and talk like civilized human beings. The killer loads his long rifle. Leto gives a nod to the helmeted man. You feel your fist contract as you stand there between these men all carrying real weapons. Okay. So we already did this. Um, do we say they're drunk? We say it's nothing. Uh, we didn't come here to chat. Interrupt me again and I'll execute you on the spot. Okay, so we had this before. Uh, I didn't know you, you had a third guy. The killer. I'm a killer too? No. Okay, yeah. And that, that gets this one to trigger. So we already had that. Um, they didn't do it. Who are we going to say? I need some time to figure it out? Does that work? Time you had time uh, to fuck around in that church. Chase some dumb drug trader. I saw you. Give me a name now. It was me. No, wait. He didn't. Um. Well. Yeah. I did, and I'm so sorry. I think this is funny. What if I just shot one of your pals here? Yeah, okay. Why didn't you believe me? They didn't confess. Apparently, it doesn't matter what I say. It goes the same way. They shoot above. That's fine. He said they killed them. Um, topics of yeah, you know, wild pine rep will change the subject maybe. See, it's not really leading into anything good here. Uh oh, we failed it. This tribunal is against the law, the international law. Look around you, livestock. We're about to butcher a lot of you. Where is your international law? There will be ramifications, but they don't need to be. Let's go inside and discuss what our investigation has uncovered. We have important. We're not fucking coming anywhere, see a light. Say something, get off this trail. Thank God it's only ineffectual thus far. Right, so this one worked. Ask about him first. Right. So. Yeah. So we want to ask about him first. So I guess we ask about this one. Uh, our colonel did what he had to do. It was one cunt or a hundred of them. Rudd here. Yeah, we already did that. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Um. Then we ask we ask about that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Hmm. That was good. Um. Do we just. And then. Do we say the leaf compact to one? Yeah. Mm, interfere now. Conclude it. Big top leaf compactor. Do I not find the gun? Okay. Um. Yeah. Well, how about we choose the bottom one? Yeah, same option. Okay. Right. So, I've tried it a couple times myself. I'm just checking it goes the same way. Yeah, reaction speed, get shot. Right. We might as well try that, because, I mean, if we dodge, it does kind of change things a little bit, doesn't it? So also not having the Yeah, not having what's it called? 
the sword makes absolutely zero difference either way. Okay, cool. So, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to look it up and we're going to find out. And if there's no difference, we're just going to sit out, out the fight. And that's it. Okay, so I've looked it up and, well, you know, there's no good option. What's your god? Shut up! It, You're not going to talk yourself out of this, loincloth shit fuck. It's meant to be like an example of how th there's just no way that this can be made right. Which you know, you easy it kind of sucks. But you know what we're gonna do? There's a third one. How Here's our option. Something? Let's walk away. No, we have to step in. This is not going to end well if we don't. The mercenary tribe. My plan is not to get killed. If this turns into a well, fight, fight, we let's go. I mean, there's nothing we can do. The armor does have a tangible Get benefit, lost, though. comedian! You cops had your Let's chance! Let's gonna past some of this. But the armor has a tangible benefit in that the armor means you don't have to dodge the shot that comes in at you. So, um... One wrong move and I'm t taking you out. We're gonna tear right through! No one is yeah, going anyway. to kill anyone. So basically the good answer is that less of the hardy boys die, and talk basically. Like civilized human beings. So... We already have all the good stuff. So we do all this stuff. It's fine. I'm just going to click through it so we have it. Yeah. Okay. So we did that. Um, talk about this one. He was a good commander. Yeah. Okay. So that, see, it, it all looks bad and it is bad, essentially. Hmm. And there's just no way to avoid it, which is a bit of a shame, but there you are. Right. Head out of there. Think of an argument. We passed it this time. Krenel does not give you the right. I don't care. It's not to kill civilians and local uh, law enforcement officers. If I fucking kill you, hang to that street. Oh, we've already done this. So both options led to the same bit of dialogue. Okay, fine. Um... So we'll just go through the rest of these. Didn't know you had a third guy. What was that? Uh, wait, okay, let's just keep talking. No one needs to die here this night. This talk talking shit won't help you, okay? They didn't do it. You know what? What happens if I just blame Titus? <laughs> nah, okay, we're not gonna blame Titus. Um, You just blame Ruby. Well, then we did let her go. Plagier is, is a way. Tice is the only one we haven't tried, but I know that all of these are bad. Let's say it was me. Uh, I probably did it. I can't even remember what I did. Yeah. Anyway. And this one is 100% the time he shoots, I think. They didn't confess. Uh, he doesn't move the weapon. The gardener isn't even one of them. Okay, sure. Whatever. It's fine. I missed. Yeah. Um, you're all drunk. Look at yourselves. I'm a drunk too. Let's dance, baby. All right, let's do this. Smear your shit over all of this fucking dung field. That didn't work at all. He's m more focused now. The wild pine rep does not approve of this. He doesn't want you to go and massacre innocent people. Now it's not a good time to strike. He's looking right at your hands. Do something else. Get him distracted. Knew you were... New York control. Okay. Well, at least that guy lives, because we talked long enough. Um, well. I did my best, I just need... You know what? Kill, uh, kill me then, I want to die. Oh, uh, what? Lieutenant glances at you. Let me help you then. Kill him. Right. Well, let's do the dodge, which doesn't matter, but we're going to dodge this time. Look at that. That's so much better. You leap left. A swarm of angry lead passes mere millimeters from your side. Tearing fabric off your coat feels like the lightest of tucks. I cannot be killed. I have become immortal. Man tilts his head, trying to see through the clearing smoke for the next shot. Watch out, to your left, DePaul is about to take a shot too at Kim. Lieutenant Ames, face pale, without trembly, quietly utters, God, please. And... Bang. 
So the guy's dead. Okay. Did he hit the rifleman? He did. An unbelievable shot from the lieutenant. Who screamed? Glenn. Glenn's dead. Well, sorry, Glenn. Alright. We have Cortenaire. And. Well, we'll look him in the eye. And we'll just dodge. Apparently this one isn't a 3% either. This one's 0%. You pretty much always get shot. So there you go. It's Here it comes. Death. Right. Tire the lower body's on fire. Try to touch your lower body. What parts of me are missing? I don't care. Fuck me. Listen through the darkness and the pain. The Hardy Boys are yelling. There's a man in pain, a familiar sound. It's Titus with a splat light meat. You hear bullets rip into him. His voice, still giving orders, grows fainter. A gurgle. He's not going to make it. What do I see? Nothing. A persisting darkness. Dancing lights of pain. Distant shadows cast by them like a hellish play. Out of it, a silhouette appears crouching over you. You hear a familiar voice filled with urgency and fear. You're bleeding out. Um. Well. Um, there's a white shadow that smells like apricots. It's always there. Stay with me. You feel hot, burning tears steaming from your eyes. Um. Well. Said I had, Well, I can't forget it, even when I drank so much. Yes, keep talking. Lieutenant pushes down your wound hard. You hear me. Stay awake. But you can't. It's so hard. Your eyelids grow heavy and the sound's ever more distant and a cold comes over you. Kim, too, is somewhat far away. Almost gone, when suddenly you sense something behind him. A shadow towering, someone standing there raising his pistol at him. The lieutenant does not see him, he's pushing down on your wound with both hands. Scream immediately, he's gonna die. Well, because we have authority and Kim trusts us. No, you scream, behind you, from your bloody lips, your eyes are full of fear. There is no room for hesitation, the lieutenant turns around and fires, his body falling on yours in the course of the motion. You hear a roar of pain, a death scream. The sound disappears like someone pressed stop on the tape. The hulking figure too is gone and so is Kim. And the whole world fall into total darkness. This is death. One more door, baby. Will Up I be a ghost rubber. now? You already were a ghost. Up there, screaming along with all of them. Scaring each other. Haunting each other. It's the living who are ghosts. The dead are silent. They don't rattle windows or write letters in blood. The living do. Right. Leave them behind. Rest. Alright, let me back into the fight. The fight? There is no fight. The fight is over. It was love a thousand years ago. You have laid here forever. Keep falling deeper. Take the door. He's not taking it. His body is not taking it. Oh, God, no. He's not disintegrating. He's swelling up instead. Over the hours. Hurting. Moaning in his sleep. And rotting. And being disinfected. And smelling of drugs. And feeling saliva in his mouth. Drifting in painkillers. Thrashing. In his womb. He can't go. Not before the case is solved. There's a radio in the distance. A radio of the world playing sounds. Good morning, Elysium. Soon you will return to the world. Hours turn to days. Soon we will get up again and go through it again, again. Finally, we know what the infernal engine was outside. The clarion core. The engine of the Cupris Kin Nima. No, it was him. He is the infernal engine. Can't you see? He never stops. He only gets worse. 
We had to hear that again. It was good. Right. So, we wake up and... One, two, three. Oh. Four. There we go. It's Kim. So, this bit can be different. Apparently, if Kim dies, you get someone else. You get Kuno. But, you know what? I don't need Kumo. I need Kim. Right, Kim. Uh, right. So we've done all of this. Did you say sunrise? Is it war today? Um, good. Ouch. What happened? What happened then? I dodged. Then I shot and wounded him while Glenn took a bullet in the spine. It was meant for me. Glenn did not survive. There's a pause. This is not the first person to die in this place. Titus, Fat, Angus, and Theo charged. Angus and Theo died before they made it to intensive care. Titus died in the hospital. Elaine, the young musician, that's all that's left. Because the other guy left. Yes. Right. Cool. Apparently, you can end with three of the Hardy boys dying and everyone else lives. Uh, Titus can live, apparently. But this is just all from forum posts. But anyway. I, I thought you only smoked one a day. Titus is dead and the major. Um... How many casualties? Right, that's it. Um, I don't see how it could have gone any better. Let's face it, officer. It could have gone a little better. You could have been armed. It was my mistake, too. I should have attacked. But what's done is done. The violence is cordoned off and the hornets did not get into the beehive. The worst scenario has not materialized yet. And we are still alive, both of us. Right. How bad am I hurt? Reasonably bad. You were shot in the left quadriceps. That's your thigh. The ultra side, thankfully, no major arteries were nicked. Right. So the rest of this we've already had. Um, but if it's possible, then by pure willpower alone, you're going to be have you're going to have to become a psycho locomotor. I'm a psycho locomotor. Good. You'll need to be whatever that is. Has anyone from my station been here? No. Then we get the flash to the side. Good. I don't need them. Right. Uh, you haven't seen any, have you? If they're so worried about me, where are they? I don't know. Right. That's between you and them, he thinks. Who treated me? Kim did. Thank you. No need. Are you hurt? Not very. Okay. Right. Good to go. So we know exactly where we need to go from now. We go straight to the island. There's no other place for us to go. Like, literally, we just go straight to the island. Um, I feel fantastic. Let's rock. What happens now, Kim? Uh, I totally do. You do, because we can't talk to everyone. The harbor is in lockdown. Everyone in there is outside our grasp. But now and Joyce is left too. Joyce is gone? Yes, yeah, she left. Okay. Um, Clage is locked away. Who killed the hanged man? I don't know. Um... Oh, okay, this is new. Honestly, our investigation has not produced a single credible suspect. This because I'm Laputa Madre's peon, isn't it? Don't be narcissistic. Half of the cops in Vevashol West are his peons. Even if you are, it is not a decisive factor in this case. That does make some sense. The flowers, Kim. What? They were on the roof. I did not catch them. Butterfingers. Yes, okay. Every piece of garbage is connected to the case. The hole in the wall. Yeah, the footprints. 28% possibility the shot came from the distance. The bunkers and the weapon caches. They all seem so mysterious. I can't believe they're fucking useless. Right. Solving crimes is super easy. Really, because to me it seems like solving crimes is hard. He sounds surprisingly weary. The concussion must be making him dizzy. Uh, You're not ready to give up, are you? No. Are you ready to limp? I'm ready. Where did you want to limp? Uh, We should go upstairs. Why not? I don't want to go upstairs. But I do want to shine the light in your face a couple times. Another look at the window. Okay, so literally, no matter what you did, if you got to this point, you were screwed. Like, you were in the same screwed situation. Wait, did these all clickable previously? I think they were. Anyway. Can't go into Kim's room. Can't have my leg hurts, but that's okay. 
You know, let's put on let's put on a different outfit because at least we know that'll change, right? At the end. Uh, so what are we gonna do? Let's go for fuck the world. There we go. We'll keep the armor on. Put on the necktie. Apparently, there's a special thing with the necktie as well. Uh, actually, you know what? We'll put on this. Little bow. Oh, you know what? We could put on the scented scarf. That does, that just clips through everything. Okay, well, that's not so good. Um, I don't know. We'll keep on our encyclopedia glasses. We'll put on... You know what? Actually, I want to know what they say about this as our look. That's our look now. Perfect. Instead of the flan trousers as well, we need something else. Um, the flare cut ones maybe give us more electrochemistry. There we go. Right, perfect. I think we couldn't look better. Right. I just want a different reaction at the end because I'm sure we can get one. But I think we got the ending. Like we got the ending to the story. I actually think, knowing this, our first playthrough was. Like, as in our first ending was not that bad. The ruins on the islet. Right, let's go. Um, going to the island. Yep. Um, what else is there? Remember the anti-aircraft gun? Something we have to do, Kim. Yeah. I'm gonna go, let's go to the fucking island. Okay, let's go to the fucking island. Lillian, let's go. Right. So we know this is where this all leads. I assume this all just leads to the exact same thing. It's kind of a bit weird. That the like I'm assuming there's not that many multiple endings to the game. Hmm. Okay. But yeah, so it's more about the journey. It's more about how you got here, how you interacted with different people, how you achieved the same thing in a different way. So it could be like Oh, we can speak with it. Who's this guy? Oh, the smoker on the balcony. A gendarme, another rendezvous. There he is again, the smoker on the balcony right here in the whirling in rags. Hi. I see you found yourself something from my wardrobe. He scans you. Not bad, not bad at all. What brings you here? Um, what are you doing here? Admiring the atmosphere. What about you, officer? I came here to kick some ass and solve the case I'm working on. Well, here's to you. Tell me again about that muscular type who came to investigate the crime. Oh yes, let's see. He knocked on my door a few days after the lynching. I think he was going through the entire building asking questions. Besides muscular, did he have any identifying traits? Oh, let me think. He had an accent, said like one of those mercenaries. He sounded vaguely orangees. Well, not vaguely scratched that. He sounded definitely orangees. Was he alone? Yes, but he was speaking to someone on his earpiece. His earpiece? Yes, you know those tiny speaker microphones that fancy security guards wear sometimes. What was he saying? Just reporting back whatever I was telling him. What did he look like? Muscular, handsome. He shrugs nonchalantly. Strong like one of those military types. What did you tell him? Nothing. That I didn't see anything. Did you tell him about your friend? He takes another drag of his cigarette before knitting his brows. What friend? Your Sunday friend. Witness. No, I don't think it came up. Thanks for the information. I met your Sunday friend. You did. A small fat smile adorns his face, and how did you like him? Um, You were right, he was magical. Magically bureaucratic. I told you, he can be very useful. I guess that's the charm of powerful people. Who is he? A visitor from the first world. He's not like you and me, gendarme. He smiles, and his smile seems melancholic. He can always return. Return where? To his opportunities in the Ossadan. So let left, still. He breathes in and his, keeps his lungs filled for a moment before letting it out. His coming and goings brings l some life to the village. Or is it just money? I don't know. He stares at the bar. What are you, you two? Friends, like I told you, Sunday friends. Friends who like to get together from time to time. What does it mean, a Sunday friend? He sighs. That he won't be there when times get tough, I guess. Is that even a friend? It is on Sundays. He smiles. Why is he staying at your place in the middle of the night? He has keys, and he likes the view. He waves gently with his cigarette-holding hand. To the sea, I mean. 
Um, I don't want to talk about the people. I want to talk about you. Hmm. What about me, gendarme? Um, about the hat and robe I'm wearing. You can keep it. I don't mind. I can appreciate beauty when I see it. Thanks. It's like I'm carrying a piece of you with me at all times. Is it now? Well, enjoy it. Okay, composure. So now he's spoken to me appears at the end. That's pretty neat. But also, uh, we can get stuff that gives us composure, and that'd be good. So replace the shoes with some other shoes. And that gives us a plus two swing on the composure. I think that was our only composure one. I could be wrong. But I'm just going to do a quick scan here. If these pop-ups popped up a little bit quicker, like these tool tips, that'd be cool as well. Okay, so we're plus three on where we were. I think that's the best we're getting. Oh, quick save as well. Why not? So those two are the same as they were. Right, back here. 58%. Failed. Hey, you know what? Load the game. I'm, I'm, I'm want to see what it says. I'm interested. I think that he's the only character we didn't fully explore previously. So, let's see. It's also interesting that he starts in a very aggressive pose. Is this locked or is this... Hmm. It could be see it could be seated, but I don't think it is. I think it's a roll. Oh, I should just check what the roll is and then I'll know. I'll check next time. If we fail again, I'll check what the roll is and then see it next time. It could be the same roll each time. Right. Oh, there we go. Could he be a member of the homosexual underground? Just pointing it out, we're not talking about some kind of cult with members here. You made it up. I have to ask. Are you... Are you part of the homosexual underground? The homosexual underground. The smoker sits up immediately, his eyes wide with amused surprise. A honeyed smile lingers on his lips. Why, yes I am, officer. Why? Do you want to investigate? Yes, I want to hear more about this homosexual underground you're part of. Oh, it's a pleasure group. A sub rosa pleasure group congregating in cellars under the cover of night. Saturday night. Sometimes even Friday night. What about Thursday night? Or Thursday night. Sometimes the congregating doesn't even end. It carries on into our daily life. He lowers his voice conspiratorially and looks around. Why do you convene? What do you do? Oh, we're ambitious. We want to destroy the last vestiges of meaning. The last things people in Revachol had to hold on to. The true uh, symbols of security. The meaning of man and woman, mother and father, their marriage. Everything will be constantly shifting and moving under our rule. The future will belong to a circus of identities just spinning around, surreal and unreal. You won't even know who you are anymore. Does it have anything to do with disco? Yes, we also listen to a lot of disco. Some say we engineer disco to spread our vision of a vertiginous, ever-changing society where all there is is a razzle-dazzle of gold. We're going to change the family unit with all this razzmatazz and finger dancing. He wiggles his hands, and with mysteries, of course. The mysteries are also of a sexual nature, very esoteric. I do like disco. Maybe I should get into it. You can't just get into it. You have to be born into it. One of is either already in the homosexual movement or forever excluded from it. What if I can't remember whether I'm in or not? What if I can't remember anything about my life aside from the fact that I like disco? Beautiful. The smoker crawls up to you like an animal preparing to jump. And beautiful, that's exactly what we're looking for. Who knows, maybe you were a homosexual in the past. Maybe all of that has been repressed. He circles his hands around you. I have to say, you do look like someone who might be part of the underground. You have that very distinctive, I can't understand what's going on here, Luke. Um, It's going to be like a 20 hour mind project for me. 20 hours at least. Absolutely wonderful. A man like you can figure out his homosexuality in a working day. It won't be 20 hours unless you want to enter the heightened realms of phantasm erotique afterwards. Then it may be 20 hours or more, but that be your own time. Tell me about the hat. You can keep it. Cool. Right. 
But we got another thought. Um, oh, the homosexual underground. You see mysterious strangers in the night, leaning against unlit doorways, engaged in hushed conversation. A shadowy cabal exchanging looks, whispering in dark alleys and unmarked locales. A radical cell conspiring against the state and perhaps even against man and woman. Was that a secret handshake? What's going on? Who are these secretive people? How will they accomplish their sinister and world-altering goals? And most importantly, are you one of them? You could be. Maybe you forgot. Of course. What? Well, yeah, of course. You know what? Um, how long does it take to research? Eight hours? We're actually not going to be around for eight hours. Do any of these, are any of these shorter? 42 minutes for the Wompy Dompy Dom Center. Wonderful. Uh, well, we could do one of these, I suppose. I don't know. We don't need to. Oh, I need to change my outfit back. Yes. Um, and then we can go across the water. Yeah, okay. Oh, yes, we also have this one. You know what? Let's not set it on fire. Just for a change, we'll not set it on fire. Uh, where's the... Uh, the weird hat? Oh, I'm already wearing the hat. Well, that'll do it then. Oh, I took the shoes off as well. Well, we can put on the uh, shoes again. There we are. Hey, maybe I should just... Actually, at the end, yeah, we should come out wearing this and the full body armor. Instead of the hell, the, the uh, insensitive hat. Right. Straight through here. Straight through here. So most of this is going to be skipping dialogue. I'm going to let you know. Because most of this we've just done. But there's going to be... We're basically looking for the nuggets in here. The, the brand new bits of dialogue right at the end. So. Hello. I like your boat. Do you like my outfit? Officer, what happened? You're limping. Why are you limping? You look terrible. Some people hurt me. Is this from the shooting in town? We heard gunshots. Not that we don't hear gunshots all the time, but they were closer than usual. There was an exchange of fire on the Rue de saint guilaine It's nothing to be worried about, madame. You didn't only get shot. I dodged the second shot. I can also get not shot. Well, good for you. Um, you see the other guys, they're all dead. So you're a killer. That's good, I guess. I guess. Better than being dead. Well, I was a killer long before I, this happened. Not a lot of RCM men who aren't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we've of we've course. done all that. Can I help you with something? Get me to the island. Um, can we borrow your boat? Thank you. What if we want to rock? Don't do that. Two days of sunshine. What's on that island? Wonderful. Uh, right, let's go through all of this. So we've already done all of this. We have to ask Lilian's twins about the island. Anything I should know about getting there? We'll use your skiff. Right. So, let's head over this way. Speak to these ones. Hello, twins. I need to know what's there. Right. You mean shells? What then? Yes, 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 yes. Mentioned something about lights. Father used to go to the island. Um, say nothing. Let them argue between themselves. Someone lives on the island. Was he the fire guy? Did he ask you to put the fire out? Anything else you can tell me about him? Right. Cool. We got the XP. We complete the task. Cool. Right. Back over here. Speak to Lillian. Be careful out. Oh wait, no, we can just go straight to the boat. Cool. Right. On to the boat. There we go. Um cool. Um So we could just get in without the boom box. Uh Sure. We'll go do the boom box. Well, we'll say nothing. Sad FM. Get in and ride to the island. Good. Go. One, two, three, three.
Okay, so we are back on the island, and while that was going on, I quickly looked up on the side some of these ending stuff. So it does appear like the ending is fairly straightforward for us. Like, there isn't too much uh, difference in terms of what you get in an ending. I'm just going to run through it, because we already know what we need. We need to do the fuel from the end, uh, we, need to qu we need to check the thing that we can click on, and then we're done. Although I will grab whatever's in here. Wait, is there was there money? Oh yeah, I did this thing as well last time. Yeah, so I, I got confused where we were. I recently don't sleep. Cool. Right, do this one. But yeah, there isn't too much else in the ending for us to get. Uh, you could do this. Anything stand out unusual? Hey, we passed it with seventeen percent. Wow. Um, right, we'll say we have no comments because we're moralist. Uh, student had some critical theory books. Cool. Right. Let's grab everything that we can in here. Although I suspect it's all going to be pretty much the same. Oh, the army surplus scarf. I didn't check that. Was that uh, worth wearing? Yeah, sure. Why not? Fits, fits with our armor. Look. Oh, that, that that's even better. Love it. Right. In here. Grab that. Grab that. Cool. Let's get all of this because we don't need any of that. Head back this way. So all of that's optional. Because it's not anywhere important for us right now. I'm, I'm after that dialogue at the end. That, that's, that's my main goal right now. I want to see the disappointment... In John Villamar's face, or what, or Villam, whatever his name is, face. I want to see his disappointment in us. All right, we're definitely going to take the medicine. We have to look at this because this tells us that he was the sniper. Yeah. So we find the things. We say it's like the one we found at Land's End. Fantastic. We inspect the wall. We look through the hole in the concrete. We say, hey, yeah, that lines up. On the left. 
on the right. Stuck in the middle. Motherfucker. There we go. Right. Um. Yeah, I can see to the roof. Right. I can make the shot. Right. Uh, why didn't we come here before? We didn't go everywhere within a thousand meter radius of the crime scene. That's not procedure. We did. Anyway. Uh, could the shooter still be here? Uh, in Martinez. Cool. Right. So now we leave this bit. We get the uh, thing that someone's... Oh wait, that's the pain in our pelvis. Never mind. Someone is watching us. Right. Run all the way back through here. Cool. So, we're done there. Oh, because I'm not wearing my coat, we don't get the uh, flashback to the... Uh... Yeah, because we not we do, don't have the esprit de corps stuff on. We don't actually get our flashbacks to the mainland. I just realized we should have had one of those by now. Oh, that's cool. That's it. I like that. It's neat. That, see, that's the kind of thing that you get from another um, playthrough of this. You don't necessarily get a different story. You just get different pop-ups. Like these things. You, you get a different view into the world. You get different quests. I mean, there could be characters that have a lot more dialogue and we just completely just didn't interact with them. Or for whatever reason. Right. Uh, tap on the side. Pour fuel into the tank. Cool. Right, it sputters. For setting down into a rattle. Leave. But yeah, that's the kind of stuff you get from this. And I, it could be worth another playthrough this game. Well, I mean, it is. Definitely. Um, but it could be worth one for, like, uh, what... Like, our current character, if we have a look at these stats, like, pretty high intellect, pretty high psyche, low physique. You could go full in physique. You could be like, I'm just going to be have, like, ten physical instrument, and I'm just going to punch everybody, I see. Or something like that. Yeah, I'm just going to be full phys physique. I'm just going to work for the mob. You know, that could be your your character. Something like that. Your physical instrument pain threshold. You just, you know, work your way through things that way. You could have no intellect. I wonder if you have very low intellect, whether you get negative results. Like, whether if you have no intellect, it's like a Fallout-style situation where um, you just, you speak in less verbose terms. I don't know. Like, that kind of thing, I think, is what's really cool about this. Anyway. Right. Uh, right. Could this open the blast door? Um, slide the radio. Press in. Open. Oh, but we... Yeah, again, because we're not wearing this, the same outfit as we were last time. We don't get all the little pop-ups we got last time about... Oh, this is the radio thing. Do you see the radio thing? That sort of stuff? Like, you don't get any of that. So, if we'd been wearing different equipment throughout the game, we would have also got different stuff happening. It's just that kind of thing. I really like that. It means that each playthrough, although it's fairly straightforward and fairly kind of, you know, like, there's one ending. There's different ways to get to that ending, but effectively there's kind of one ending. Um, you, Your journey there is completely different, which is neat. I like it. Like, I, yeah, it, it's... Try to think of other things to say. Well, you know what? I might leave it for a bit. We'll hold off a second or two. So, first of all, we got the dinghy. White flowers blossom all around you. Oh, maybe we would have got a clue about this guy earlier if we'd uh, caught that flower. Cool. <laughs> right, so we've seen this guy. He's sharp. He's practically tearing up from spite. Hatred got the best from a long time ago. The man hates everything. Are you the now? fire guy? I can't hear you. I may have. Yes. Fire guy. My eyes. Retained your eyesight. Yeah, Close the blast. The one. How do you know I was coming? I told you we shouldn't play sad FM. Uh, but you didn't say that, I Kim. Did. Okay. We've entered a world where he said you shouldn't. Is the only world. It was not reactionary. It was cool. The fascists were right about rock and roll. It is degenerate. It's not nice. Anyway, it's a that's all we got there. The Samara was sent to Right. So we've done all that. You heard we've me. done that. It's good now. Like chalk right. wiped from the board. It's not wiped from the board, I remember it. They wouldn't like hearing their name coming from your mouth. A damn dog. Cool. Um 
So I said you could keep the gun last time. Let's let's not say that. You know what? Sorry for disturbing you. Goodbye. Fucking clowns. I should have known they sent fucking clowns for me. You hear him mumble in the blackened logs. I love that he's just like... God, can't even do this right. Right. Uh, you need to put the gun down. Lieutenant pulls the pistol from his holster. You're a glorified night watchman. This is a service rifle. I can only lay it down before an enemy commander of corresponding rank. Well, guess what? I am an enemy commander. A big time operator of the Pederast army. How about I keep it, huh? Hand it over to a real killer. A briscade. I love that when we did this previously, we said you can keep the gun and Kim was like, no, you, you give us that gun and he just gave us it. This time he's putting up a fight. Lieutenant aims his pistol square at the man's forehead. Put it down now, sir. Or you're going to blow my brains out before you question me. To hell with it. It's a walking stick anyway. It's out of bullets. Cool. Right. I... I'm gonna pick up the gun. Inspect it, sure. Uh, yeah, it's what he says it is. He uses jacketed ammunition. As he speaks, he stresses every word he's... Yeah, okay, fine. We've, we've already done all of this, I think. Who are you? And then we go through the entirety of his history. You've been on this island for many, many years. And then we have to go through all of this. Uh, right. There is quite a lot of dialogue with him. A ton. Oh no, there we go. There's the fishing village stuff. So what? I guess we still have reasonable esprit de corps. Don't we? Um, yeah, it's still six. It's not zero. Our empathy is really high. I just noticed our empathy is our largest stat right now. But that is also because our clothing gives us empathy. Right. Um, I'm afraid she's gone. Right, cool. What has he done? Perhaps a confession will lighten his load. Right, you deserted your unit. Lapse of faith. Okay, so we have to go through all of this. This is fine. Yep. So all of this is fairly straightforward. It's just tons and tons of text. Right. Um, right. Uh, what's this island? Then he says it's the landing and he does all of this stuff. Um, so, we say that I am not one of them. Your RCM. Who calls an operation against 50 million people death blow? Uh, coalition military? Shakes his head and says, Iblis. Iblis, the black eyed angel. How have you survived? He steals. Um, as a choice, you could have become self employed. Create the system. You're insane and grotesque. Everyone steals vegetable supplies. It's the life of a dog. Yes, and then we go back into the norm, the same stuff as we had before. We have Dromine. Yeah, okay. Uh, you need to be looked over. How have you coped mentally? Uh, I also live in hell. At least you know it. The traitors of the city turn the lights. Yeah, okay. It's the same kind of stuff. How have you concealed yourself? So it looks like generally the dialogue with this guy for our character is fairly samey. But that's because, well, we're pr pr pretty much the same character as we were last time. Um... Yeah, okay. So we'll keep going through this. Hey, we gained experience. Nice, we gained more experience. Uh, and then we get this, and then we get more experience. So this is your termless surrender. You're with the RCM. Um, we're with the RCM, let's leave it at that. Let's say something different. Let's, you represent the moralist, international, enemies of humanity you took this city. I represent their adversary, La Parti Communiste de Insulinde. Yeah, okay. And then we get the same stuff. He says, take them to me as a prisoner of war. Uh, you never signed this thing of surrender. I answer to the Communist Party. And then we say, understood. Right. Um, so we go through all of this. Right, it's the same stuff as we did before. Um, 
I notice I'm not really into politics myself. You're an in inert lump lumpin with a gun. Uh, you see, that's where he's wrong. I don't have a gun. Uh, we can assess his body language, but we'll probably fail there. What have you used this gun for? Used it for killing people. Right. Uh, right. This is the great serotonin jackpot. The solution. Make him repeat it. Yeah. So you kill people after the active fighting stopped. Um, I want you to tell me, have you killed anyone with the gun last week or two? I don't want to tell you anything, you grotesque murderer. Um, right, did you use it to shoot this person? Um, right, the corpse in the tree. Yes. So, that's fine, we have to go through everything. We say we've got the gun. Right, through all of these. Right. Um, stop changing the subject, we have the murder weapon. You think we have the murder weapon? We have the murder weapon. Cool. Right. So we go through there. We've done the ballistics. This is really just for the payoff at the end here. Uh, you admitted to killing him. Right. What am I forgetting? My head hurts now. Who cares? There are many bells in the grass when you got here and on Plagey's balcony. Is that a coincidence? But don't forget the footprints. The diagonal prints in the dust. They're going to come up. Thank you, head. Uh, Maze bell. I saw them growing here. Damn me, bells. The whole island is turning white with them. He seems tender suddenly, nostalgic even. A strange mood swing. So many this year too, the spring coming in. No, it's already here, wash the filth away. Um, well, a young woman, I haven't seen flowers anywhere else on Martinez, only here. They blossom on the eyelids before. We fertilized them with our blood. Resurrection was snow white in May before they ruined it. The coast too. Before they piled up their containers on top of it. Filled with broken useless trash for fat fingered burgoys. Children to pay, play with. You must get around the lot to stay undetected. Do you know any secret paths, pinball workshops? I mean... Okay, and then we go into this, the line. This is the line. We didn't get the May f uh, flower stuff before, I don't think. But then we get into this stuff. Um, yes, right. So we go through all of this. What brand of boots are you wearing? We go through here. He maybe changed his shoes. Yep. There we go. We know he changed his shoes. Um... He was a killer, but he was still under the protection. He was a soldier too, and he was a man. Yeah, okay. So you shot him. And then we say shot, not killed. He does not need to be pushed anymore. The ball is rolling. Hold our breath. There we go. And then we fly through this stuff here, and we get 70 experience for extracting the confession. The old man nods. We have the motive. Why were you looking at them? You pull the trigger. You're trying to assess, um, you're looking at, uh, anything you haven't liked? More specifically, how come? Mr. Clare, anything more? That all? Okay then, I have some questions about this. So we go through all of this stuff. Right. And not the first people you've met from the city. Uh, and then we go through all of this again. Have you approached them? Right. Uh, when was this? What did you talk about? And did you agree to kill this person? He tells us about the one in the past. What was the deal between him and Edgar? That's a past. We worked out that he killed the person 20 years ago. She was a woman. She just disappeared. Right. Someone made the call, bend in the river, she was dead, how come? You shot her, someone shot her, okay. And then we go through it, but you did do it. I saw it happen and I liked it, right. Same old hate it, freezing hatred. There's plenty to do here once he's in custody. And then we tell we go through Rene. We, we just nod through this one. Um... Just nod. 
You'd like to kill him. Uh, yeah. Anyway, we, we move on. We don't tell him about Rennie. That's fine. And then we get another flashback. So we're glad we talked about this. Um, when did you first see the deceased? There we go. Yep, wrinkled up whore. Aren't you a communist? He tells us about communism. Moving on. Go through all of this. What did you not like about the night of the murder? You were jealous. So we move our way through all of this. Yeah, there was a lot of dialogue, wasn't there? I actually forgot quite how much there was in this. So this is just him telling us about the boy. Uh, we say we checked it and there was nothing there. He says that's impossible. Says what her name is. Right. We keep moving on here. By the way, Clage, um, she is... Uh, we can get that one here as well. Um, Clage, she would be involved in the... What's it called? In the Mercenary Tribunal. If you try and arrest her, she she says, no, don't arrest me, and then you, you like, um, you give her mercy. Then she will still be there, and she gets involved somehow. Not entirely sure, but apparently that's something that can happen. Which is neat, you know. It has a consequence, opposed to her just disappearing from the game, which is what happened when we arrested her. Um... Wait, sorry? Um... Yeah. Uh, she practically breastfed the man. You wouldn't believe the things she let him do to her. Um, well, we both saw through her. That was the one I chose last time. Yeah. Um, it's not like that. I don't think like that. No one gives a shit what you think. You and your cronies can kill ten working class men a day. I've heard the statistics on Channel 8. You had feelings for the woman. Right. Uh, is that why you left dried flowers by her window? Why then? I don't really know. Yeah, okay. I don't know why I do the things I do anymore. You wanted to console her? Maybe. I just told you I have holes in my brain now. I wouldn't just sit here and wait for you. If you came here ten years ago, I would have killed you. Right. Cool. Right, so we've done that. We have the motive. I'll say I'm not at liberty to say what we did to her. That's fine. We get another flash to the, uh, to the mainland. Right. Um... So, do we want to do composure? Well... I mean, it didn't actually affect anything, the composure, did it? It just, it just gave you extra background, so we can skip it. Yeah. Fine. Whatever. You're under arrest. Do you understand, sir? He's sweating. Pupils are dilated. We say, wait. It's just the reeds. Could we all fit in the little boat? Does it have room for three? Um, this is not a problem. Who watches over while I come back for you? What is this farce? Fucking farce, I can't even. Lillian, you could ask her. We can just ask the net picker to watch him. Uh, wait. <laughs> wait we've gone down a whole different path. This is no harmless old man. The lieutenant shakes his head. This fucking world. He stares at something. Who knows what? In the dust, this world, what is it? You could come back for me once you've taken him to the precinct. No, it would take a whole day on this island. You go and transport the prisoner. I'll be here. I will escort them to the pier with you. No need to be polite. I'll do it. This world, what are you talking about? His voice drowns out a sudden gust of wind. Us. The wind is cold from the east. Your skin is crawling suddenly. I was wondering whether this was going to pop up. So basically we have an argument about who's going to take him back. And then... The Insulindian Phasmid! This is so creepy. I love it. I still love it. Right. So, Insulindian Phasmid. There we go. We blink. We say, what is that? He says that he doesn't know what it is. Giant stick insect, he's very confused. I see it, Kim, can you see it? And then we know that we're not insane, but that means it's there. Right. Cool. So, we're through there. Speak to the Insulindian Phasmid. I like that you could, in theory, you could just ignore it, couldn't you? 
We have a ton of electrochemistry, so we'll just approach it. And then we get to have this weird inside its mind moment. Um, I'm gonna look closely. Say it's foaming. Uh, what are you doing? That gives us our inland um, thing. What's it like for you? Fire burning. Um, right. So we go through all of this. Um, that's fine. Yep. We're just using the same choices that we went before. Um, is this a dream? Where did it come from? Uh, right. So we, we go through the reeds and say, did he eat fellow reed monsters? We say, that's insane. We ask what the pail is and we go, well, I would really like to have known what the pail is earlier. Right. Um, have I always thought this way? When I drank too much, I forgot everything. Am I having a violent seizure? What does it look like? Am I your vision about the fate of mankind? It's about our fate. Cool. Right. Uh, you are the kindest creature I've ever met. Turn from the woman. What woman? I will try. She was middle class. It doesn't take a three meter stick insect to tell you that. Wow. Um, we'll raise the other hand too. We'll say that's right. Pray. Uh, and then we will take the photo. Please have the hat in the photo. I would love it. Ah, oh, no hat. Sucks. Okay. Uh, we got it. We back off now. Right, disengage slowly. Cool. We say goodbye, Mr. Phasmid. Phasmid flies off into the distance. He already does move quickly, doesn't it? When it moves across the water. He, she, it, it moves quickly. Yes, we decided that it, um, it was an it. That was it. Yes. Right. And then the guy is still there. We run back. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Whoa, 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 whoa. Almost forgot this stuff. Uh, you managed to collect all the armor pieces. I'll have use for this armor in the future. Future use for future armor. Agreed. Gear up. Heavily porcelain man. It's a violent world. Hell yeah. We now get to put on that. We're in the full outfit. Love it. Right. Uh, and then in the boy, we get the evidence. This thing gives us the passport that we can interact with. Cool. What was this doing in the phasmid's nest? I think the phasmid's took it. Maybe it's curious like an octopus. We look at the photo. It says the name. She was lying to us. Um, right. What is her real name then? Put the passport away. Right. Back over here. Speak to the man. We're now wearing the funny helmet as well. What is it? How could you what not see you the phasmid? I can't go. He starts going crazy. We snap our fingers under his nose. There's nothing. Okay. What's happened to this man? I think it's the phasmid. Uh, it's just the reeds for him. Uh, right. It's maybe for making him forget. We conclude with that. Found some things in the phasmid's nest. We just show him these three things. Like when we show him the helmet, we're pretty much just leaning forward. Like, you know, look at the helmet. I'm now wearing it. It was a dead man's, but now it is ours. Cool. So we say hang tight. And then we're done here. Right. So, back to the mainland in our very stylish outfit, and we get to find out whether our ending has changed at all. I'm just gonna throw it out here. I don't think it has. I think John is going to say the exact same stuff to us. But, you know what, that's okay. I, although, at least he won't ask us what we're doing in all this flan uniform. Instead, he'll say, why are you wearing a full set of ceramic armor? To which the answer obviously is, I have a full set of ceramic armor, therefore I will wear a full set of ceramic armor. It's just the way things are, you know? 
Ooh, something here. What was that flutter? Block of quail. There's no wind on the island. Alright, we've already done it. Yeah. That's just the thing where we could listen to the wind. All Pocahontas style. But we don't need to do that. Back to the mainland. Let's return to the mainland. We're done here. Right. It's uneventful. We, we turn back and... We climb out the skiff. I don't know why I felt I needed to quick save there. The chances of us getting a game over between now and the end of the game are very unlikely. You're quite the tide brought in. I want to call you a teapot, but I'm honestly kind of impressed. No idea where you got all that gear, but there's no doubt in my mind that some bad, bad people are looking for it. I like the reference to our gear. Also, you look like a fucking idiot. True. Whatever this is, it's completely unimportant compared to what you've just seen. This is the man in sunglasses. You know what? Let's just say the armor, no one else seems bothered by it. Oh, really? They don't seem bothered by it? That's because you're a cop in an exoskeleton. Yeah, I'm a cop in a goddamn exoskeleton. Actually, are you? Are you still a cop? There's so much disco going on. It's hard to tell. Vic, calm down. There's, there's a giant. We are not forgetting about anything. Who Look are you? you? Who are you people? Hello, I'm Trant Heidelstam. I believe we've met on several occasions. I'm your goddamn partner, Jean Vicmar, and this is your special task force, or what's left of it. Special Consultant Trant Heidelstam, Patrol Officer Judith Mino. Hi. We have come to scrap what's left of you off the pavement. Lieutenant Kim Kisoragi, Precinct 57. We've just come from the island where our investigation led us. The scene is making him feel as though he has to justify your actions. We might need your help with something later. As if he recalled that in fact he's a decorated police lieutenant, not a naughty boy. But this is clearly a departmental matter. So I'm going to leave you to discuss it among yourselves. No, Kim. You gotta have my back. Let's destroy them. It's good to meet you, Lieutenant Kitsuragi. You're the man with sunglasses. That's right. And you're some kind of murder machine. Yes, I am. What's this all about? Ari, we want to help you. Trant, I believe this is where you come in. This is the horse-faced woman. Yes. Um, I go. don't quite know what I'm doing here. I was asked to participate as an expert. I think I need to manage your expectations a little. I'm at best an enthusiast in cognitive science. My background is in something else entirely. I engage in neurology on a merely theoretical level. In fact, I should probably get going. No, Trant, it's too late. You're part of this shit now. What have you got to say for yourself, shit kid? Right. And then the rest of this isn't uh, actually um, voiced. After all that Sylvie stuff, he betrays me. Who's Sylvie? Oh, wow. Yeah, I forgot about this. We, it's been so long. Sylvie's a whore. She rides a cock carousel and foreigners. Super, he says with a nod. Whore, foreigners, hatred. Um, and she interjects, trying to defuse the situation. People on the street helped us too. You're a legend among drunks, Harry. A legendary local drunk. Okay. And then we go through these, which I suspect is going to lead to the same stuff. Maybe you were too sarcastic. I don't like being lied to. Right, we went through here. So trying to hide us down. What was up with the kid? It really was his kid. Right. What's this? Um, so you're special consulting. Duped again. Right, um, you mentioned a task force. Who else is in this task force so we could quickly go through it? And he tells us everybody who's in the task force. Right, where have you been all this time? Um, you're a detective god. Fuck everything. All will burn. Detect or die. Why would you leave a literal police god? You were crying hysterically. 
You were drunk, breaking things, being emotionally abusive. You said we were going into the abyss. None of us wanted to see the abyss, so we fucked off like you told us to. Right, we move on. And we fly through here. So economically, we say, is it because I'm poor? I drank so much I lost my memory. Um, let's say it's something to do with a two meter hole in the world. This great, uh, corresponding to a tw 20 centimeter hole in your brain. I see how this folds neatly uh, into itself, into itself neatly. The, I'll explain later, but there's another man who's lost his memory, a crab man. Crab man is an unfortunate choice of words, but I was there. The church on the coast shook from an audio spatial anomaly. It may have been anthroponetic, or perhaps related to radio waves. Either way, I have to put this into my report. You should read it. I do not, however, think it has anything to do with him drinking himself to the point of brain damage. Thank you, Lieutenant Kitsuragi. Just to clarify, I do not think a salary. Anthroponetics are a hoax. Pale produces global phenomena. It's proven, however. He believes us? What has not been proven is the total memory loss after drinking too much Commodore Red. Honestly, I think he's just lying to us. But Detective Fikwamar, he has blanked out before. And then we go back into stuff we already had. Uh, oh, the two cases in your ledger, the unsolvable case and the New World Mural, those were recent. Those cases were hard on you. Oh. Right. Interesting. So we get just a tiny little bit extra for actually reading. But apart from that, we haven't got anything else there. Um, You know what? Let's say instead of this time, I s said before I'm a line detective. Let's say I'm ready to lead again. No one even mentioned that. He looks at you, then at Tran. I misread my question. What it should have been is, is he ever to put on clothes, use the potty, or do we need to put him on disability pension? Right, so we've already done that. I'm going to stand here. Just stand there. Yeah, yeah, just stand there. It's cool. Really? No. Now we discussed that. What the fuck did you do to our motor carriage? Why is it there, Harry? Um. Well. Hold on, it's in the ocean? Yes, in the ocean, under the sea. Our work vehicle with fish and clams and other sea shit. Um. I thought the killer would be underwater. He wasn't. Ha 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 ha, ho ho ho, underwater killer, so funny, Harry. So thank you for fucking me. Weirdly, same line, but instead of that he, underwater killer, he said tequila sunset. Okay, I'm seeing some of how this is written, which is interesting, seeing behind the bit here. Show me your badge. What I do have is this futuristic armor. We're not armor cops, we're cop cops. I, you don't, people don't know us by their armor, they know us by our badges. You, you called in and said you lost yours. Have you found it? Got oh, my badge right here. Oh, right. We lost, we, we dropped it last time. Let's catch it. It lands on the ground. We strained our elbow. He found it. He found it. Jean, it's his badge. The man stares at you unimpressed. And your gun? Actually, I think we caught it last time. Um, God, you know, I think I may have pawned it. Anyway, it's gone now. Yeah, I checked the local pawn shop. You sold the pawnbroker a Villers 9mm pistol to pay for booze. It worked too, didn't it? You're drunk right now, aren't you, you fucking bum? I can smell it all the way over here. Um, well... I tried not to, but I can't work as well without it. Well, Harry, you let the suspect escape, Ruby something. You were too drunk to take her in, weren't you? We've read the reports. Lieutenant Kitsuragi's, we know. Um. Well, I didn't let her go. It's an act of mercy. She was going to shoot herself if I didn't. Oh, well, if you let her go. He rubs his face in frustration. I'm not even going to get into the other 80 suspe eight or other suspects you have brought in because it's hard. But the fact you very likely sold your gun for booze. That's peanuts, that's nothing. A humorous antidote. Compared to the eight people who are gunned down, the streets are literally red with blood, Harry. It's a fucking mass murder. Right, so we, we did this stuff. Kim says that we did it. 
uh, and then I say that we solve the case, all of it. And then Kim says it's better if he does it, so Kim does it, and then we fly through this. You should yell something. I'm a policeman of the state to come. Uh, the RCM consists of policemen of the state that is, so a little discrepancy there. He turns back to Vikramar. Other still is he's an ultra-liberal hustler who is always on the grind. Yes, so we've, we're literally the same. It's the same ending. Yeah. With some cool bits on it. Um, it may be at three meters tall. In fact, we think we may have discovered the largest land invertebrate ever discovered. Boom shakalaka, motherfucker. Yeah, okay, and it's connected to the case. Um... Yes, the Phasmid may have contributed to mental state. And then we go through all this. We, um, we have a strong motive for the killer. Um, yes, and then we, he tells us about the fact that it's Lilianovich. Um, well, and he did it because of jealousy, which is just the correct answer. Um, it's more of a, like a perfect folding mechanism like the Phasmid. Perfect folding mechanism. He rolls his eyes. Get over yourself, Harry. I can still smell the booze on the wind. God damn it. Doesn't ever leave. It is theirs like in your bones or something. Phasmid was a female. That's not really... It's parthogenesis. Uh, and it's just a hunch. Okay. It gathered items in its nest. Could be male... Anyway, so we jump through all of this. We start a nightclub. Um, yeah, where we reinvigorated the local nightlife. And then Kim saves us on it. Uh, we fight and tell him about the Debordeurs Union, and that's all good. Dead man on the boardwalk, and I'd called that in. We're not the only cops in the city. We did the doomed commercial area stuff. And there was a fridge we needed. I confiscated drugs from Kuno's dad. And then... Right. Public relations is too valuable. I have a few questions before I go about who I am. Who am I? Okay. That does explain a lot. Collection of Flan sportwear. Contact Mike. I say contact Mike. It's fantastic. We fly through here. Of course, contact Mike is fantastic. That's what you need to remember. Um, right, we're a gym teacher. Get the same stuff popping up, and then I join the RCM. Cool. Uh, right. So, oh good, we get to ask this question. Am I a dirty cop working for La Puta Madre? No. No, because I sus the suspect seemed to think... You're too unstable to work for a mob boss. You're suicidal, Harry. No mob boss would take you. I assure you, I wouldn't consult for a corrupt unit. He would immediately backpedal out of it. I told you, it's not that bad. Alright, so why am I like this? Some chick fucked us over. Dora something. Dora Ingerland? Yeah, something like that. Half Vassian. Vasa is where beautiful and possibly blonde people come from. So we weren't even married. When was this? Six years ago. Could have been six. Three. Let's go with three. No, it was six. Who was she? Incredibly bangable figures. Right. Yeah, yep, 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 yep. Pain Welkin. Uh, yes, we, so we formed a spiritual bond with her body. Precinct 41. We get to ask about the fellow people in our group and prices and then we recently set up a church and then we went to bloody murder station the phasma didn't need to tell lena about it she's a cryptozoologist what will you do now kim we recruit kim to work with us uh and I'm ready. And that is the end of the game again. Disco Elysium. So, um, that was a, an interesting final episode. 
It illuminated a lot of stuff. I'm happy I did it, but there is a part of me that was like, a little bit of the illusion of the game has been worn away. Not that the game is not fantastic. But the end, for us anyway, was pretty much written in the stars. However, here's what I want to say about it. The reason why the end for us was written in the stars is because of the choices we made earlier in the game. Like, we could have acted in a different way and that would have given us a different ending. For instance, if we hadn't developed the same relationship with Kim in the game, Kim may be dead because he wouldn't have listened to us about the guy who was going to shoot him. That's just one consequence. That then means that Kuno's with us at the end of the game. That completely changes the tone of the final conversation. It's, it's like our partner is dead. So like, that's a huge thing. Say that we hadn't heard about Contact Mike. We would have had a whole host of different things going on there at the end. Um, say that um, we hadn't done any of the Phasmid stuff. We wouldn't have known what was going on with the Phasmid. That gives us a different ending. I have no idea what the other options are with the Phasmid. I mean, what if Kuno was there with the Phasmid instead of Kim? That just means that we have some drugged up child as basically our, uh, you know, I'm trying to think of the best way of putting it. We have some drugged up child as our, uh, like, our evidence, I guess, that we saw this thing changes the ending. Like, there's all sorts of things that go throughout the game that are going to change things. Um, like, there are bits as well. If we'd worked with Everart, the bit where we go into the square with the mercenaries, yeah, the outcome may end up being the same, but our relationship with Titus is going to be a lot different. Or, our um, like relationship with the mercenaries is going to be a lot different. It could be a lot more confrontational. Like, you see, that's the kind of thing that's coming in there. Um, if we'd worked with Evrar, I assume we would have our gun at that point. That then turns it from being like, uh, we're standing in the middle of the square and going to die, to we're part of this firefight. Like, it changes where things are going. So, although the endings we got from Ruby were fairly similar, and I thought there was going to be more change there, it's, there is a logic to it having been decided earlier on. Because earlier on is where we choose how we're going to handle the case, and it chooses what type of character. So, there's some interesting stuff in there. And there's a whole bunch of stuff that people maybe don't, uh, like, that I, I basically only quickly scan the form. There's probably a whole bunch more, like little Easter eggs here and there that can change how things go entirely. And what I really like, oh, interesting. I didn't see that it says, and everyone at Larian Studios. That's interesting. Because obviously Larian did Divinity. Hmm. That is neat. Anyway, but um, this sets up really nicely for more games in the same universe, I would say. It set up a, a um, it set up Harry and Kim to go further. It set up Harry by himself to go further into more, like you know, stories about the world if they want to go that way. It set it up for other stories to be told in the same world. I really like that. I mean, maybe they're just gonna leave it there. They're just gonna be like, hey, that's it. That's the that's that's all you get kind of thing for this. In which case, it's still an awesome thing on its own. But it feels like this is the start of a lot of things in this world. Or at least a good set of games set in this world, which is just weird and wonderful. And I'm looking forward to it. So, if you've watched this far, and if you made it through this particularly long and mostly skipping through dialogue episode, thank you for watching. I really appreciate that you want to watch this, and this is something that you like as much as I like. So... Thank you for watching, and hopefully I'll see you in whatever comes next. There's not going to be a direct replacement for this game on the channel, just because um, I'm lowering down the number of series that is, are happening at once, because five is a little much. So we're just going to go into having a nice four series on at once for a little bit, but, you know, I'm looking to get into something CRPG-like soonish. So, thank you for watching. I'll see you next time. Goodbye.